now finally begin with something which I think most of you will be waiting for and this is somewhere where some people struggle and it is an important aspect because again it helps us in you know uh, learning the name of the compound which we have been discussing for so long and this is nothing but IUPAC nomenclature. So IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. Basically IUPAC is like the organization which controls chemistry it's like it tries to uh, you know organize chemistry prepares rules for chemistry it looks into the various works of chemistry right etc etc so it's basically that main body parent body of chemistry in the world and it stands for the international union for pure and applied chemistry the international union the International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry and Applied Chemistry right now the IUPAC has created a system of naming of organic compounds and which is what we call IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds right so now let's learn how we can name IU, uh, compounds on the basis of IUPAC nomenclature before that let's try to understand the name of an organic compound so names of organic compounds so on the basis of the uh, of the type of the name we've got actually organic compounds have two kinds of names right there is an IUPAC name which is, uh, you know, based on the rules set by the IUPAC. Okay, we look for all those things. And the second way to name it is by the common name. And the common name is basically based on the source. B depending on the source of the organic compound, we give it the common name, right? For example, ethanol, which has the formula CH3, CH2OH, or it is also called C2H5OH. Right. This is the this is an alcohol, right, with two carbon atoms. Now, this is an alcohol with two carbon atoms and it's IUPAC name, which you'll learn how to do a bit, in a bit of in, in some time. It's IUPAC name is ethanol. But its common name. Its common name is based on its source and it is called ethyl alcohol. So you can see the difference, right? Here it's ethanol, here it's ethyl alcohol. They have the same compound, but they have different names, right? They're completely different from each other. But why was there a need to put IUPAC name if there is a common name? Well, it's because common names differ from place to place. As you know, we all speak different languages. We have different cultures. We have different mother tongues. So based on that, different compounds got different names. And the IUPAC found it imperative to make a centralized system of nomenclature so that everyone can identify uh, with that particular unique name the compound which is being referred to right so that's why IUPAC name nomenclature was introduced for now in your course you will not be asked common names because common names are not really important uh, from our you know unit of chemistry we only have to study the IUPAC name which is important and this is the name which we usually use in our daily lives right so let's have a look at IUPAC nomenclature now IUPAC nomenclature basically creates a structure for a name right there is a structure of the name of an organic compound right so there are many parts of that structure so the structure of an IUPAC name structure of an IUPAC name so for an IUPAC name there's a fixed structure right first comes the prefix right which I'll tell you what all of this is right first comes the prefix after the prefix comes the word root which is also called alk a l k alk then comes the primary suffix and then comes the secondary suffix Okay, so these are the, this is the basic structure of an IUPAC name, right? First comes the prefix, 
then the word root, then the primary suffix, and finally the secondary suffix. Right? We'll understand all of this, right? Prefix, this prefix basically gives us an idea of any substituent present on the compound. Substituent. And substituent is basically a branch to main parent chain. Branch to main parent chain. Right? So, as I've discussed during, uh, as I've discussed in the video on chains, branches, and rings, suppose you have a compound like this and you attach one carbon like this. Then, here, this carbon, which forms a branch, is going to be the substituent. Right? Substituent. Right? Again, you can take another example. Suppose you have carbons like this and you attach one carbon here and one carbon here. So again, these two carbons are going to be substituents. Right? So that's what we call a substituent. Right? Next comes the word root. Let me just now clear all of this. It's not required. All right? Okay. So next comes the word root. Word root basically gives us an idea of number of carbon atoms. Okay, it tells us about the number of carbon atoms in the compound, right? And we'll learn how to, you know, write the word root. There is a specific word root for each number of carbon atoms, right? So number of carbon atoms. Next, primary suffix. Primary suffix is basically something which tells us about type of bond. between carbon atoms okay so it basically is either in in or in and you know you can guess that if there's a single bond then in if there are double bonds then in and if there are triple bonds then i okay so that's again it tells us about the bond between carbon atoms you usually put an in an in or an i and the secondary suffix, finally, this tells us about the functional group attached. Okay, and excluding halo group. Halo group is the only functional group which comes before the name, right? So, halo group comes here as prefix. Okay, so also halo group. Halo group is added as a prefix. It is not added as a secondary suffix. All other functional groups are added as secondary suffix. Okay, there, the functional groups, it tells us about the functional group. Again, each functional group has a specific suffix to be attached. Sim uh, like ain, in, and ein. And even each number of carbon atoms has a specific word root, which is given in the name, right? So this is the basic structure of an IUPAC name. Right? I hope that's absolutely clear. But before we go into the naming process, which is the fundamental naming process, let us now, you know, go into the particular word roots for particular carbon atoms, right? That's what we're going to do. So let's have a look. Uh, let's have a word. Let's ha have a look at the word root first, which is called ALK, and it gives us an idea about the number of carbon atoms in the compound. So let's first draw a table. Let's tabulate this number of carbon atoms and then the word root to be kept. Okay, so if suppose there are, there's one carbon atom, then the word root is meth, M-E-T-H, meth. Okay, so the word root is meth. For example, if there's one carbon atom, it's an alkane, you know it's methane. Because met, there's no uh, branch substituent, there's no substituent, hence we don't have any prefix, no functional group, so no secondary suffix, only we have a word root and a primary suffix. Word root is met, and since it's an alkane, it's ane, so methane, right? Next, we come to two carbon atoms. Let me draw it with another color. So, next we come to true carbon atoms, and the word root will be eth, right? So, if you recall, if there are two carbon atoms, it's ethane an alkane with two carbon atoms is ethane so eth plus this primary suffix which is a okay ethane 
If there are three carbon atoms, then it is called prop. So propane, right? Next, four carbon atoms, it is called but. Okay, that's the word root. Then five carbon atoms, from here it gets pretty simple, pent. Right, pent. Next, six carbon atoms, we have hex. Seven carbon atoms, we have a word root of sept. Sept or hept? It's hept. It's not sept, okay? I confuse you. It's not sept, it's hept, okay? Next is eight carbon atoms, which is oct. Then, next is nine carbon atoms. This usually comes really rarely. Then it is non. And then if there are 10 carbon atoms and you have till 10 carbon atoms in your course, then it is dec. Okay, so these are the word roots for the various number of carbon atoms, right? And we substitute this exact word root for that particular number of carbon atoms in the IUPAC Indian structure for the word root, right? That's it. Okay, so word root is done. That's how we determine the word root. Now from the word root, let's come to the next thing, which is a fixed thing, right? And that is your functional group. Now the functional group to each functional group has a specific secondary suffix, right? Except for, yeah, for the hello group, it's a prefix. But for all other functional groups, it is a secondary suffix. So we're going to have a look at that, right? So first, let's have the functional group. Okay. And then we have the respective secondary suffix. Please remember this. It is important. It is essential that you start learning the secondary suffix and the word root for the, for the nomenclature, right? So let's have a look now. Functional group. So suppose you have the hello group. Okay. which is either fluorine, either chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Okay, in this case, it is attached as a prefix, right? So, basically, you have halo as a prefix. Right, now that halo depends on which of these elements you have. So, it can be either fluoro, for F it is fluoro, fluoro, and then alkane. Then chlorine, it is chloro. For bromine, it is bromo. For iodine, it is iodo. Right? So this is the halo functional group. And we attach all of these as prefixes if a halo group is present in an organic compound. Right? Next thing which we are going to look at, the next functional group we're going to look at, is going to be alcohol. Or better name it as the hydroxyl group, which is its proper name. Hydroxyl group. Okay, again it is OH. The secondary suffix for this, secondary suffix for this is all. So we attach a secondary suffix of all to this, uh, to the name of the compound. Next, for your aldehyde, aldehyde group, aldehyde group, CHO, we attach a secondary suffix of al, al, al. Next, after aldehyde, we have carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid or carb carboxyl group, COOH. For that, we attach a secondary suffix of oic acid, oic acid. Okay. Next. After carboxylic acid, after carboxylic acid comes ketone, ketone, CO, ketone, CO, and for this we attach a secondary suffix of own. Okay, so these are the secondary suffixes and for halo group these are the prefixes which need to be attached, right, to the main name, right, I hope that's absolutely clear. So, 
these are the things which we need to look at, right? The hydroxyl group, the aldehyde group, the carboxylic acid group, and the ketone group, okay? So basically, we have now looked at the word root and we have looked at the functional groups and the secondary suffixes, right? So now, for now, this video is done. We have looked at the introduction to nomenclature. This is the first part of this video for IUPAC nomenclature. In the next video, we'll be beginning the proper process of the naming. All right. Thank you very much. Goodbye.